What's poppin' T-Squad? It's me, Keisha, and I'm here with tonight's Insecure Season 4, Episode 1 and 2 review. So on last week's episode, we um, the show opens up with us finding out that Issa is no longer friends with Molly. And I don't blame her because Molly irks my motherfucking nerves. This uh, friendship breakup has been coming for quite some time. Do I think they'll work it out eventually? Of course they will. Um, but then maybe get that fuck they won't because some friendships ain't meant to last, goddammit. Um, but then they rewind four months ahead, I mean, four months uh, previously so we can see how everything played out. So Issa is trying to get things together for this block party that she started uh, last season and she came up with this idea and we know that she's working with a young lady by the name of Condolences. I know her name is Condola, but it sounds like Condolences to me or Condoleezza Rice, so I'm gonna call that bitch Condolences. Condolences also plays on 20s on BET, which she does a fantastic job over there, but on 20s, they got her looking like an old maid. Her wigs be tied. Her outfits be horrible. She looks so cute though on Insecure. But we all know that condolences met East, uh, met Lawrence at Tiffany's baby shower last season and now they're dating. But at this point, um, Issa doesn't know this yet. Um, we also found out that Issa fucking some fat nigga that worked for TSA at the airport. You know, I don't fuck with fat niggas. I'm a fat girl. I don't think two fat motherfuckers should be together. I think that it's sinful. I think that it should be one of the uh, t- Ten Commandments in the Bible that thou shalt not fuck a fat nigga or a fat bitch that's just too much skin and blubber and fat cells rubbing up against each other. I have a whole room smelling like bacon and eggs and shit. The shit is just mm-mm, it's disrespectful. I don't want your titty touching my titties. I'm feeling like I'm fucking a bitch. Am I a lesbian now? What is this? Mm-mm. So, but she fucking that fat nigga, and that fat nigga was fucking the shit out of her. I, I wouldn't have been able to do it because my stomach fat, your stomach fat, my bed gonna break, and you ain't got enough money to go buy me a new one. I'm good. But he was fucking the shit out of her little ass, but the only way he could make her come is missionary. Um, but I like little fat homie. Um, you know, he bought her some little goodies from TSA, got her some weed or some shit, and bought her some snacks and shit. Uh, I'm like, that. that's how we got Corona. <laughs> from niggas like, yeah, bringing shit over from Japan and shit that he didn't find. But she was like, you know, good looking out. You know, he a good piece of dick. He fun to be around. Um, what else was going on in this episode? Molly is still dating Duck and Noodles, Asian Bay. Um, they've been kicking it tough, but on the way home from one of their dates, she finds out that they're not in a committed relationship. He's still dating other people. Now, she done put all her eggs in one basket. And I was like, well, how you feeling some type of way about that? If he ain't ever brought the subject up, then how you just automatically think y'all together like the fuck molly molly ass is fucking retarded molly irks my fucking nerves um so now she feeling some type of way because he hasn't made it exclusive with her he's still dating other people and so she feeling some type of way about that you know she always looking for a reason not to like somebody every time she get close to somebody she figures out a way to push them away and then the niggas that don't treat her no good she all in for the shit like molly and therapy need to be a consistent thing she need to be going to therapy every fucking day of her life because that bitch is fucking crazy um then um Issa finds out when she meets up with condolences about her and Lawrence dating. Tiffany is there very much still pregnant. It seemed like Tiffany been pregnant for the last three seasons. When is she gonna have this big head ass baby? Um, And we find out that Tiffany knew that she went on a date with Lawrence but she thought it was just a one thing, a one time thing and so she felt like she shouldn't, that she didn't have to tell Issa but I feel like there was still something you should have told me. You know what I'm saying? You know that was my nigga of five years. This ain't just like no nigga I just fucked around with for a quick second. Like, I had a whole life with this man. You knew I was working with her. You should have told me flat out. You should have told me about the fact that she went on a date. Whether it was one time, a a lunch date, they met up for coffee. You should have told me. They be letting Tiffany get away with too much shit. Tiffany ass need to got popped in the mouth three seasons ago. Um, She be on some fake ass shit. I'd be glad when somebody cuss her the fuck out. Um, it was very awkward as always, um, when she found out, you know, that this girl that she really has started to like and bond with is dating somebody so significant that was in her life. 
Um, so then it's the day of the event that Issa holds at her apartment building when she's trying to get vendors and people to invest in this block party. Things are not going so well. Um, people aren't really signing up because she doesn't really have a mission statement of what this event is condolences is there i loved her outfit that she wore it was so cute molly arrives with duck and noodles she feeling some type of way still she and her fifis and then she do some old fucked up shit make that man take a, a uber home when he roll with her i would have never fucked with her ass again like never in a million years would i have fucked with her again Issa uh got tsa bay fat boy there helping um escort people in i liked him at first before I got to tonight's episode, I really liked them together. Um, <clears throat> you know, he was supportive. You know, he was funny. I was like, shit, that's the nigga she need to be with. I fucks with him. Even though I fuck with fat niggas. Um, Issa is, however, able to turn the event around on last week's episode and get people to, you know, sign up for the event. Uh, <clears throat> but then at the end of the event, her and Molly, um, very reminiscent of season one. What? Very uh, reminiscent of season one when they got into it on the season one. I think it was the season finale episode or maybe it was the episode before the season finale when they got into it. But um, her and Molly were having a conversation and Molly was just like, I can't believe that you're even still friends with condolences knowing that she's messing around with your ex. You just like toxic mess. You just like being a mess. And my feelings was hurt like it was me it was just like and I love the way that Issa Rae played that part because I would have reacted the same way in real life you know how you be so shocked that a motherfucker even came at you sideways and all you can do is just sit there like froze your mouth open and then you computing in your mind do I cuss this bitch out this is my friend because if I cuss her out we ain't gonna be friends no more like it's just a whole bunch of things going through your head so um I was like, you are so reflecting your shit off onto her. Like, you're projecting. Molly, I feel like, was jealous of the fact that Issa and Condolences is getting cool. <clears throat> I feel like Molly is one of those people that loves mess, loves drama, always find a reason to be mad about something, be upset about something. I also feel like Molly is one of those friends that liked when Issa was down and the, the poor friend that didn't have her shit together and she feels like she's the lawyer. She has the nice car, the apartment, she got a little money in the bank. That she was bigger and had more than Issa. Now that Issa's finally getting her shit together and that is via the help of somebody else especially to some new bitch she don't like that shit she likes being the friend that is constantly the one above her you know uh, you know what's that saying that you know a lot of motherfuckers like it when you're either on the same level or lower than them but as soon as you surpass them now we got a problem so she's just really fucked up I feel like and I said this to Monique and a couple of my other friends um that I just feel like um Molly this season is going to lose everything. I feel like she's going to lose her friendship with Issa. She's going to continue to have problems at her job. She's going to lose Duck and Noodles' child. Um, she's going to have to go through a lot of stuff. Um, <clears throat> so, and I feel like she needs to go through that process because she needs to lose everything so she can realize how fucked up of a person she is. She needs to deal with her inner demons, the shit that her, the way she grew up, her childhood, her family situation. She needs to deal with all of that. So on to tonight's episode. So Molly and Duck and Noodles are on a date and he says, you know, he gets a phone call. He steps off to the side. It's something work related. She knows that it's a problem. He comes back over. She's like, you know, what was going on? He was like, oh, nothing. He brushed it off. He ready to go home and fuck. So they go home and fuck and he knock her back out, bitch. <laughs> and I was like, okay, Duck and Noodles. Um, but, you know, she was kind of taken aback that, you know, he didn't want to open up to her about, you know, his situation, what he had going on. So Isha shows condolences the venue space where they're going to have the block party. And they're so excited. You know, they're clicking as girlfriends now. And condolences tells her that she's going on a vacation. And so Issa was like, is it, you know, personal business? And she was like, romantic or whatever. She was like, oh, man, romantic. Oh, I forgot you fucking on my ex-nigga dick. Gotcha, bitch. And so... 
they start laughing about the shit and making it so not awkward anymore and start joking about all the weird shit that Lawrence likes. And I really like condolences and Issa as friends, despite the fact that she fucking her old nigga. Because I really feel like Issa's at the point now where she ain't tripping off of Lawrence like that. But what I do think is going to happen is I think that condolences is going to be the person that ends up leading Lawrence and Issa back together again, or at least being friends again. She's going to be the segue for them coming back together because I don't see this thing with condolences and Lawrence going very far. Um, So on Halloween, Molly tells Issa that she feels out of the loop with the block party. You know what I'm saying? And it be like that sometimes when it be like that sometimes when you get a new girlfriend and y'all talking all the time and then your friend that you've been friends with for a long time kind of falls off to the wayside. It happens like that a lot of times in friendships. You know, your life is going this way. That person's life is going that way. And it's hard for y'all to connect and come together as friends. I'm going through that right now with being honest, Monique, you know, she knows that, you know, we haven't been able to be around each other like we used to and talk the way we used to because of our lives or just going in so many different ways, but that still doesn't mean that the friendship and the love isn't there. You know what I'm saying? It's going to always be there. We've been friends for almost 30 damn years. But friends, friendships go through ebbs and flows like that. You have your good peers, you have your low peers, you have those peers in friendships and I think that's what people need to understand. So, they vow to connect that later on that week. So they discuss duck and noodles. Now, mind you, Tiffany and um, I forgot the other girl is there, but she's my, I love the old girl. I can't think of her name right now. But they're all in their Halloween costumes or whatever. And they discuss duck and noodles and her sex life. And she was like, oh, bitch, <laughs> don't feed into the area of Asian stereotype. He got it. He, he can fuck with it too. So she says that the sex is great, but he won't open up to her. And Issa is wondering, like, is she just fishing for stuff to complain about? And we're like, uh, duh, don't nobody need to be Ray Charles to see that shit, uh, to not see that shit. I was like, first of all, Molly, you go from feeling some type of way that he don't want to be in a serious relationship, that he's still seeing other people. Now you're being mad because he don't want to open up to you. How do you expect somebody that ain't even made you his girlfriend to open up to you? Y'all just fuck buddies at this point. He don't want nothing heavy like that right now. Y'all just kicking it. Y'all in the kicking it fun stage, girl. If you want more than that and he's like, he, he ain't ready for that yet. Like, you can't ask for all of this for somebody. You just fucking like, girl, sit down. So... She swears that it's just him talking all the time. I mean, just her doing all the talking. Like, he won't open up. Molly say, you know, I'm going to fall back. I'm going to stop fucking him. Girl, okay. Get the fuck out of here. So, Issa's still fucking that fat nigga from the airport. And they fucking this shit, child. And he getting, hitting that G spot for her. He, he, we working it out. I kind of want to gag, but I digress. So, she have her orgasm. And then for him to come, he asks her to press... His booty button. No, you don't have a glitch in your system. That's me being one to throw up and vomit. Because, nigga, excuse you. You don't look like you drank not now green juice ever in life. You don't look like you drink water. You think I'm about to stick my finger up that ass? Where I know pig feet and hog maws and Cheetos and Lay's and flame Hot Chips and came out all and Issa up here trying to work her way around this nigga fat ass body he's so fat she can't even dig her way around to even get to his booty hole I was like girl and that's the way he needs to have a, 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 I was like I was all here for you TSA babe but then you ruined it with the butt play cause if you want me to stick your booty my finger up your booty I feel like you want something else in your booty excuse you sir we're not doing that and then he finally busts his nut and they lay down in the bed. And I, I'm looking at the screen like, Issa, you ain't gonna get up and wash your hands. I know your hands stink. I know your hands stink. I know your hands smell like in and out Burger. Bitch, you... <laughs> and then he told us, oh, shit, the kind of slipped off. She was more worried about the kind of slipping off than her finger smelling like shit. So she rushes and goes into the bathroom. She got the mirror underneath her cootie cat looking, trying to dig the damn kind of out. She came, she looking like, girl, this is my life. Like, this is where we at in life right about now. I'm fucking fat niggas that so fat that the condom then went up my coochie hole. So then the condom goes splat into the, the to the mirror, and I just wanted to throw the hell up. I was like, Issa, get it together. 
So Molly tries to talk to her co-worker, uh, Tori or Terry or whatever that nigga name is, but he ain't feeling her ass ever since how she did him last season. And I don't blame her because Molly is ruthless. So Condolences tells Lawrence that she and Issa were laughing and talking about him and he started feeling some type of way about it. Like, what the fuck y'all talking about me for? And, you know, he tried to, you know, act like he ain't really tripping off of it, but he really truly is. And he tells his friends that he's like, so what should I do to Issa to keep my name out of her mouth? Say something to Condolences. They was like, they was basically telling him, I don't think you should do nothing, but if you do say something, like, just be careful at how you phrase things and how you go about doing it. I personally felt like he was doing too much. I personally felt like if the girl told you it wasn't even nothing like that, why do you have, why do you feel the need to reach out to Issa? You want to talk to her. You wanted to talk to her, and that was your excuse to talk to her, because it wasn't even that deep. I could see if Issa was budding into your relationship you know, try to be negative and tell her to stop fucking with you or something. It wasn't even nothing like that. You wanted to talk to Issa. Uh-huh. So, um, Issa and condolences are wrapping up one of their meetings when Molly arrives and sees them laughing and talking to her. Baby, she was jealous. She was feeling some type of damn way about it. She didn't like it. She don't like that this new bitch that came and took her bestie, baby. So, Issa asked condolences to end up staying while they have, you know, lunch or dinner, whatever it was. And when she goes to the bathroom, Molly tells Issa that she, you know, wanted to talk to her solo. Like, she didn't want nobody else around. And I can understand it. Like, we haven't been able to connect. I wanted this just to be our time girlfriend wise I would put my foot down like if this was me and Monique or my other best friend Losha whoever I would just be like girl I don't want this bitch around I, I want to talk to you about something can you tell her to skedaddle you know but she tried to play it off like okay you know it's fine because Issa was like you know we'll just talk doing our self care Sunday but it was obvious Molly was feeling some type of way she just wanted to connect with Issa and I kind of felt bad for her a little bit in that part because she just really wanted to connect and talk to Issa but then on the backhand side she is very jealous of their friendship so Lawrence pulls up on Easter to talk and I'm like you're doing a lot homeboy and he tells her that you know she and condolences can do what they look thing thing but basically he don't want his name being brought up in conversation and she assures him like it ain't even nothing like that bruh calm the fuck down they gonna be fucking before the season is over so Duck and Noodles comes over to Molly's house to chill but he thought that when he she invited him over to chill that they was being Netflix and chill and they was gonna be banging and bumping uglies but she made him some salty ass gumbo and shit and they sitting down at the table she showing him childhood photos and shit like they on Dr. Phil and uh he she somehow they get to talk about his family but he don't really want to talk about his sister and why her ass went missing and this this and that and Molly, like, you know, I just feel like, you know, I want to date somebody with depth. You know, he was like, is this because y'all gonna put a label on it? She was like, no, I just want to date somebody with depth. And he was looking like, the fuck you trying to say? Like, I'm just a flighty motherfucker. Like, this, he was so offended. And so he said, you know, everything is an issue with you. And I'm like, how many more motherfuckers got to tell your ass there before you realize you are the problem? He get up and leave. I don't blame him. Because, girl, we ain't even boyfriend and girlfriend. I don't need to give you my whole discography. What the fuck? So he said condolences, um go to a schoolboy Q concert together. And while she's waiting on condolences, she texts Lawrence, no, she calls Lawrence, um, was like, you know, just so I don't mess up, Dr. do I let her know that me and you met up the other day? Is it something you just want to keep between me and you? He was like, no, nah, I just keep between me and you. And see, that's where you're going to fuck up. Because why is it, if it was nothing like that, why are you keeping it away from condolences? Because you liked seeing Issa. But okay. So Molly calls her while she at the concert and she don't answer. She looking like this bitch at concerts and shit without me. Oh, hell no. Nah. So at work, Molly doesn't agree with something that Torian said about a case while they're in one of the meetings and she make a face that she's caught. So after the meeting, Torian confronts her on it and she admits that, you know, she was wrong for how she treated him last season with another case that they was involved in. And he was just like, you know, he know like whether he wasn't ready to accept her apology. He was just like, I, I ain't got time to deal with this right now. He don't know if he can trust her. Um, so then Issa tells Molly that she got schoolboy Q to perform at the block party and Molly tells her about Duck and Noodles walking out on a date. And Issa said, you always finding a problem. Sometimes I'm like, do you want to be happy? And I was like, ooh. And I, ooh, I was like, read her ass because she ain't had no problem reading you. Tell her ass about herself. You are a miserable ass bitch. So um, she was kind of like standing there like, really girl so he said i'm just saying aren't you tired because i'm tired for you and i've had friends like that where everything is a fucking problem 
That shit is draining. I don't have time or the energy for no negative ass bitch. So Dunkin' Noodles calls and she takes the phone call privately and he apologizes for not opening up to her but he says you know it's really hard for him to do that and she was like you know i'm willing to wait on you and you know they got off the phone it was all cute and when Issa asked her who was at that call she lies and says it was work i was like why would you lie to your friend and say it was work like i guess because she had already told her that she was gonna fall back on him or whatever but i was like you had met up with him after I, it's confusing with molly like molly just gets on my nerves it's confusing with her it's always something then Issa tells her that she broke up with tsa babe because plan b was starting to become plan a <laughs> and it was just too much they got like five kids five baby mamas and molly was just standing there with this guilty expression on her face and i guess it's because she felt bad about lying to lisa i mean Issa about her situation not being up front about her situation or whatever and I was like this is the reason why she's cooler with condolences because you can't never keep it real like you always fronting and lying like we can't even be real with each other as friends then are we even friends like what's good what's up what's good let me see if I can text Mo and get her in on this conversation because I wanted to do these videos with her we was trying to figure out a way for us to do it but um we can't screen record FaceTime. So, hold up. Let me see if she answered the phone. Get her opinion on the episode before we go, before I log off. I know y'all miss her. I miss my bestie too. Be glad when Corona is over so we can kick it again. Hey, girlfriend. Hello? I said, hey, girlfriend. Hey. I got you on a uh, speaker. You on, I'm recording right now. I was calling you. I was, uh, face oh, thank you. <laughs> I FaceTime you so they can see your ugly ass, but you ain't answer. You want me to FaceTime you or you want me to just call? Oh, uh, 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 this, this, this right here is wrapped up and I got on uh, two ways to <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I was calling you before I logged off of my insecure reviews to get your opinion so they can hear you and hear from you because they ain't heard from your ass in months. So tell them what you yeah. felt about the uh, review tonight. Okay. You say what? Tell them what you thought about tonight's episode. What did I think? Um, I think that, because um, I was just um, talking to Shahid about it. <laughs> But um, I'm I'm tired of Molly. She's on my Girl. Nerves. Um, I don't know why she just won't go and date somebody else like he dated somebody else. I don't know why we do that. Like, if you're gonna accept that he dated somebody else, go and date somebody else. You won't you'll find out about somebody else. Don't just throw all your damn apples in one basket. Is that how they go? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> but I think she should be dating somebody else. She just really just irks. I'm like Easter. Like, damn, do you want to be happy? And girl, when she said like, that, she really don't give herself no break. Like, no. But bitch, when Issa uh, put that mirror on her and that condom fell off, I just thought that. Ugh. I wanted to throw up. Oh, I went in on that part. Because <laughs> it's enough dude want her to play with his ass. Like, girl, really. I was so disgusted. Yeah, that shit was nasty. That was nasty. Um, the thing with Lawrence and, uh, what's the name? Condola. I call her Condolences. <laughs> um, what you laughing at? I said I call her Condolences. Don't do that. <laughs> I like Condola. I just, I don't know why I feel some type of way about them <laughs> being together. I just want them to get back together. I don't know why I want them to get back I just do. I think they're going to end up getting back together. That's what I was saying to on my review. I felt like he wanted to talk to Issa because you didn't even have, he didn't have no reason to go over and say what he said. You wanted to see her and that was an excuse exactly. for you to see her. I don't know if it was that. I think that it's, I think that he's um, trying to portray this image that like um, the shit I've been the shit and he don't want, want her to know like um I know that he did say that she cheated on him, but I don't think he wants to. She, he wants the girl to know, like it's because I wasn't on my shit. Right, right, right. Um, 
and he maybe he don't want her to know that he got lazy tendencies or something. I don't know. But I know that that girl not knowing about uh them meeting up is gonna be a problem. Yeah, because I was like, if it's not such a big deal, then why don't you want her to know? I mean, it wasn't a big deal. You really didn't even have to say nothing. To her. Exactly. Like, you know. Exactly. And then it's all on your terms, that type of shit. Like, don't be trying to control the shit. And I see what it is. He listens to the stuff. I see it. Life seems to be too much. Mm-hmm. Don't let him fuck up your stuff. Yeah. Why do you think that Molly lied to Issa at the end of the episode saying it was work instead of telling her that it was duck and noodles? Don't do that. <laughs> You should see my face. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> I think she said that because just, just like um, maybe just in case uh, shit fails again because she knows she's a complainer. <laughs> Girl. So she can just leave that part out because, I mean, it's like kind of like a safe place where, you know, if I'm going to be in some bullshit, I can just kind of keep it to myself. And because... Issa starting to be 100 with Molly, like, mm-hmm. bitch, you, yeah, so I think that's what it is. So she, mm. but I'd love to see where that goes. So do you think, uh, what's his name is going to come back to the show? Nathan. Mm-hmm. I think he going to end up popping up at some point. Now, I don't know if they're going to be in a relationship, but I feel like he going to pop up at some point. He going to have to pop up because it was left unfinished. And especially now that she ain't fucking with Fat Boy no more, now is the what perfect time, huh? I think Daniel's gone. Yeah, Daniel gone. He ain't come back. Mm, we over him. He ain't come back. But I feel like it's gonna be something where Nathan gonna pop back up, and that shit gonna those feelings gonna arise, or you know, arise, and then whatever's going on with Issa and Lawrence is gonna be right there too. And she's going to probably have to make a decision. She's not for Nathan no more. I think she's good at for uh, Florence. I think that Nathan and uh, TSA Bay is sweaty ass. <laughs> Girl, he was shook it too. <laughs> Girl, I just could not. Mm-mm, like, mm-mm, mm-mm. She could eat some. Girl, I was girl. I said that to me. I said, I you know that shit was fake. And she couldn't even get that arm around that nigga. Girl, bye. Mm-hmm. Disgusting. Okay, well, I'm 30 minutes into this damn review, so I figure this is what we gonna do every week. I'll do my review part, and then I'm gonna call you so you can give. You can FaceTime me. I'm gonna comb my hair. <laughs> okay, so I'll let you know. Exactly <laughs> when I'm about to film, so you get yourself together. And then next week we'll FaceTime. Okay. All right, bye, y'all. We love y'all. I'll call you later. Okay. Bye. All right, y'all. So that's my review on Insecure. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys were happy to see Mo back next week. Next week you'll be able to physically see her. Um, let's talk down below what y'all thought about tonight's episode, last week's episode. Let's have a conversation. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell button. I love you guys. Bye.